morning, friends. I was just about to do a little sunflower harvest here, and I thought I'd invite you to join with me. And if we haven't ever met before, my name is Lisa Mason Ziegler of the Gardener's Workshop Cut Flower Farm. And I am um, a big fan of growing sunflowers as cash crops. And so we are heading into the end of our actual season. We plant them every week from um, several weeks before our last spring frost all through the summer right up until several weeks ago and I'm harvesting some of the last ones so I thought maybe you might like to watch me do that you probably won't be able to hear me chit chat because of the sound but I'm gonna actually harvest these sunflowers and um, I'll let you go along for the ride I know you can't see me now, but you will in just a second. So the first thing I do is go along and strip the leaves from the stems before I cut them, which you'll see in just a second here. I'm catching these at the head of the bed. So I just hold on to the head. I typically only leave one leaf at the very top and that's for hydrating reasons and I cut anything that I can see the petals on. This is a rogue, this is not a pro cut, so he's not getting cut. Definitely need gloves for this job.
So one of the things that I really avoid, I try to avoid this time of the year, you know, late in the season, the bumblebees and, well, all the bees, we have our neighbor's honeybees over here. They tend to cling and hang on to the flowers longer this time of the year. So you have to be really careful. And one of my methods of madness is, as you just saw, I went down this side of this row and I'm cutting, I'm now collecting um, those that I stripped. And because this is planted in cover crop, I really don't wanna walk on the other side of this bed. So that means that I would have to reach through. I typically harvest the side closest to me first so I'm not reaching through open flowers, which is always where I get stung under the arms. Um, and you can see here that I've gathered them up and when I'm cutting, I try to just gather them with a, an even plateau up here. So there is no fussing with them. You put them in your hand in the right spot, the right height. And then I just cut the bottoms even and I'm gonna just drop these in a bucket. And you can see there's various stages of openness here. Another safety tip, um, you know, I use a pouch with my clippers. You can find the pouch and the shears that I use on our website, thegardenersworkshop.com. Um, you shouldn't walk with clippers out in a garden. If you trip or fall, I mean, you do not want to impale yourself, speaking from experience. Um, so the rule here on our farm is everybody has to you have a pouch. Um, we love this pouch because it has a clip. You do not have to have a belt, so you can just slide it onto your pocket. Um, but it is best to train yourself to not walk. Can't get it back on my pocket. To not walk with your clippers out. I try not to do them. I mean, obviously, you have to do that when you're cutting. But when you're traveling through the garden, um, there's just so many things that can trip you. I just really recommend that you always just drop them back in your holsters. Holster A holster like this, a pouch, will save you so much money because you never lay your clippers down. So I'm gonna go gather some more sunflowers. So part of my harvesting strategy is when I bend to cut the one I'm looking at, I'm already spying which one am I going to cut next. That all adds to your efficiency. Efficiency adds to profit. And all of this adds up to good business practices. So all of these, as um, always, are all pro cuts, different varieties. Um, most of these are, they call them gold light. And see, I'm just cutting, because the top's lined up, all I have to do is cut the bottom even, and they're ready to be dropped in a bucket. There is no shuffling, playing with them, looking at them, fussing with them, spending time at the bucket. You're just walking to the bucket and dropping them in, and you are literally done. So one thing you may notice is that these are pretty small. 
Um, we call them mini sunflowers, which is an awesome marketing um, opportunity. Virtual, by virtue of shorter day lengths, even though these are day length neutral sunflowers, Pro Cuts are pollenless and day length neutral, they still tend to be smaller as the days are shorter. And our customers love them. This is in fact really the perfect size for bouquet making. Designers love them. They don't even think of them as sunflowers, y'all. It's just absolutely pretty fascinating. So I've gotten all the leaves off and I'm gonna drop these in the bucket. And then I'm gonna go back and reach in a little deeper to get some more. All right, let's start up here. So I literally just tuck my fingers under the bloom to make sure I don't pluck the head off and to hold the stem straight and then just reach and strip. Wearing these gloves, we live in Atlas Garden Gloves. You can find those on our website also. They are machine washable. I wear the same pair for sometimes more than a season. Unless the Golden Retriever steals them, you'll absolutely adore them. You're gonna also find all of the pro cut sunflower seeds on our website. And I will tell you, I was sharing with a customer on Instagram this morning. Um, we're already having trouble getting restocking of certain colors. So be thinking about getting your seeds for the next spring season because the time is now. your ball boy.
So my hand's almost too full. I'm trying to finish. I'm famous for doing this, just putting too much in my hand and then I'll drop them all just to save myself from a walk back to the bucket. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? All right, so I'm gonna cut the ends so the tops are pretty even. And you get pretty good at guessing this after you've you know, cut a million, literally, sunflowers, probably. So one of the things I did wanna show you is, um, show you this first. You know, I don't know, if you followed along with me all summer doing sunflowers, this is what the sun fill will develop into if you leave it. We grow the sun fill. Let's see if there's one. This one's not too good, but I've let them all go too far. We really grow them for this stage right here to be filler in bouquets. Um, we love the sun fill green, and you can find that on our website too. That is not a pro cut, but it does grow on the same schedule. It's a, a 55 to 60 day bloomer. And then I wanted to show you this is the lemon. I don't know if you can tell the difference between the orange ones and these lemons. This is going to be the color of the year next year, y'all. It is already the Pantene um, color, and that is the sunflower that's going to nail it for people. Um, so let me put these down, and then I'll see if you guys have any questions, and I really should get to work. All right, folks, let me move you. It's me. All right, so let's move over here to where the bucket is and where I can stand. Um, got all my toys here on my golf cart. My new battery pack, chainsaw and such. So, Let's see if anybody has any questions. Actually, I cannot sit down. And there's just too much sun here, I think. All right, so I was gonna, let me just carry you and the bucket up here to the shade. Stand by y'all. Look at the garden if you can see it. All right, Whew. that's much better. So have a look at this. This is what we harvested. You know, this is easily 100 stems, better known as $150 wholesale. All right, let's see. Um, so the snips are on our website, thegardenersworkshop.com, and they're called cut flower shears because that's, in fact, what they are. They're actually Japanese bonsai shears. So they really, I'm trying to screw this thing tight, y'all. Stand by. You know, I've, my tripod got broken. There we go. Um, and I've just never really gotten really accustomed to this new one. Tucker is standing over, y'all see him standing over there at the golf cart. He's standing there waiting for me to throw his ball. I've trained him so well. All right, friends. Whew. So let's see what we got here. So the snips on our website are called cut flower shears. That they, they don't really have a name. All right, so let me hold this steady and let's get to the top here and do this. I'm supposed to be cutting the fence. And just good morning, everybody from far and near, I see. Love watching Tucker just sashay through the fields. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, he's, um, he's pretty happy. So I don't see... 
any real questions yet, so I'm going to jump off here, friends. I just really wanted um, for you guys to see me cut those because that's really probably the last really good cut um, until we start back up in spring. So Tammy's asking which variety. We only grow pro cuts um, for several reasons, because they are pollenless, day length neutral, have the strongest necks, um, and they come in a bunch of colors. They go from seed to bloom in 55 to 60 days normally. Um, and you can find all of them um, on our website in single color, individual colors, or mixes. And you can go back and watch any of my Facebook from all summer, and each week I show you exactly how I start them. Does the stage at which you cut them vary with the different growing times through the year? No. Um, first off, they always get away from us. But because we have such grasshopper pressure here, we like to um, cut them just as the petals, the first one lifts. They will quickly open indoors. Um, so it's the same year round. Yep, I, you know, somebody said they ordered their seeds. Let me tell you something, y'all. It is not a marketing ploy that you hear um, different retailers saying, get it while you can. It is a reality. Um, I mean, I don't know if you watch the news of all the container ships sitting out in the Pacific Ocean. That's just the BB and the Astrodome of what's really going on. Um, we've been waiting for some products for over a year, literally. Um, so when things are in stock, I mean, what's the motto for TJ Maxx? If y'all know what that is, the great store, like get it while you can, because you'll never know if it's going to be there when you go back. That's exactly the way that we feel. We're already ordering cool flower seeds for next fall. <laughs> you know, we're already loaded up for the spring. Some things we, I'm just watching Tucker rooting around. Tucker, what are you doing? Um, so jump on it. And especially for Christmas shopping, y'all. I mean, for real. And I'm going to be doing a live from the warehouse Christmas special. It's like the last Saturday in November, I think. Y'all, we'll keep you abreast of the date, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Love your system of stripping leaves eat before cutting. Um, that is very streamlined as well as it puts the leaves in the garden instead of you having to haul them from somewhere or stand there and do it. All right, friends. So thank you. Um, somebody's asking about good spacing for planting hydrangeas. That really depends on which hydrangea and what your situation is. But as a general rule for those kinds of shrubs, six feet is, you know, what we're looking for. And it feels so good standing here in the shade, y'all. Can they be planted now? I'm not sure what you're asking about. Love watching how you work. It's very helpful. Just plant your camera out there whenever and working. We can just watch whatever we're doing without bothering you. That's so sweet. We do have, by the way, you know, a farm cam on our website through YouTube. It's over there. It's actually on the Cool Flower Garden. I mean, it's not much to look at. I mean, there's not a lot of action, but you can check in and see kind of the progress. So you can find it over on our YouTube channel. Um, and so Lisa's asking best way to store seeds till next spring or fall. We have a wonderful blog on our website, thegardenersworkshop.com. Go to the Learning Center, go to my Field and Garden podcast and blog, and just go to Seed Starting. And um, Rhonda actually wrote an excellent short and to the point article about how to store your seeds. Um, and so good, I'm glad Elizabeth Snow, I can't even imagine. Um, it's warm here during the day. It's getting chilly at night, but we're heading for cold weather. So I'm just trying to do the best I can here, making the most out of what we got. And I don't know if y'all saw it. Did you listen to my podcast with Joe Gardner? Um, such a great talk with Joe. And I was so flattered and honored to be um, a guest on his show. So please check out the Joe Gardner podcast. We talk about, um, it's about vegetables, love flowers, my three season cutting garden book. And, um, it was just so fun to talk to him, and we're just getting such a great feedback from that. All right, friends, I'm going to cut back my native border that's growing through the fence into my neighbor's yard. I'm trying to be a good neighbor, right? So I'm taking my tools and going outside of the fence. So, friends, till we meet again, ciao.